Hi there, welcome to our first interview with practitioners. Today our guest is Martin van Bure, quantitative risk analyst at Rabobank. Together with him we will discuss about the way in which an important bank like Rabobank assesses the probability of default. Okay, let's go. Uh, could you briefly introduce Rabobank to our students? Rabobank is one of the most leading and sound financial institutions of the world. Um, it's a cooperative bank, which means that we don't have shareholders, but members instead. And these members are formally the owners of, uh, of the bank, so they decide the course of the bank. And this turned out to be very profitable for Rabobank as was shown recently in the financial crisis of 2008-2009, uh, uh, Rabobank didn't need any government support, uh, kept up uh, its, its financial uh, uh, results, and uh, we are still being rated as one of the most creditworthy banks by the major rating agencies like S&P, Moody's and, uh, and Fitch. Rabobank uh, cooperative structure stems from the early 20s, 20th century, uh, when farmers united financially and helped each other out. Um, so this, uh, yeah, in this way the cooperative structure was uh, established. Um, and today, Rabank is still, uh, yeah, an agricultural bank. So anywhere where agriculture takes place. Rabobank is there all over the, the world, uh, so in that sense Rabobank also stays close to, to its roots. And uh, what is your background? I studied applied physics and then after my graduation I got an additional master degree in econometrics, which yeah is very much, uh, or, or which is very suited for uh, quantitative risk management. So, uh, could you give us an idea of the ways in which you assess the PD, that is to say the probability of default? I'm going to tell you something about the PD model for commercial banks. In this PD model we try to estimate the credit worthiness of the banks we are dealing with. Uh, development of this PD model consists of uh, several stages. Um, the first stage is the factor identification. Which factors can possibly explain the credit worthiness of the commercial banks? Secondly, we have the data gathering. We need a whole bunch of data. Uh, we proceed with the single factor analysis in which we are estimating the predictive power of uh, each factor on standalone basis. We proceed with uh, correlation analysis. What is the correlation between uh, different uh, explanatory variables? Uh, next, we have the multi-factor analysis. How does our model perform when we combine several factors to explain the credit worthiness of the bank? Uh, next we have a calibration and a user acceptance test in which we test if the model is in line with uh, expectations of the user of the model. Uh, that sounds interesting. And how do you gather data? For the data, yeah, there's quite some considerations uh, involved. Um, First of all, ideally we would like to make use of real default information when we are developing a PD model. Uh, however, then of course you need a sufficient number of defaults in your portfolio. Uh, and this is very suitable for developing retail PD models where you indeed do have hundreds or maybe even thousands of defaults. However, for commercial banks there's not enough defaults, there's maybe a handful of defaults uh, historically, so this is too little to develop a PD model on. So instead what we do is make use uh, of a shadow bond methodology instead of this 
uh, real default frequencies. The shadow met bond methodology we make use of the ratings given by an external rating agency like S&P or Moody's. Uh, we get all these ratings, triple A, double A, and we link it to a PD. Uh, so the estimate of uh, that that triple A goes into default might be one basis point, double A, three basis points, etc. So this is the, the yeah the so-called dependent variable, the variable we want to explain. And on the other side, there's a whole bunch of explanatory variables, which might be the financials given in the annual reports of the of the banks. Uh, but there's also qualitative factors which are uh, filled out by experts. How good is the risk management of the bank? Uh, what is the position of the bank when it comes to market risk exposure? Uh, things like that. So that is uh, more uh, yeah, explanatory variables from a qualitative point of view. And in the end we try to have a good combination of both financials and qualitative uh, factors in the final model. Um, I have another question. How do you take into consideration experts' uh, judgments? Of course, we can uh, do wonderful, wonderful things uh, mathematically. We studied all econometrics or mathematics, applied physics, so we love uh, modeling. Uh, however, we should not forget that the model is going to be used by senior risk management and they have to have confidence in the model, uh, it should align with their uh, expectations of the model. So therefore involvement of experts is uh, very important. So in order to achieve that we have expert sessions in which we present uh, our progress and, and the factors that perform very well from a statistical point of view. Um, but then again the big challenge is to come up with a model based on historical data that is still forward looking because what is important in the past years is not necessarily important in the years ahead. So that is really a big challenge and when you look at the financial industry I think there's uh, not many fields uh, that are undergoing more changes than, uh, than the banking industry and the financial industry. Uh, when you look at, for example, at liquid assets, uh, CDOs were used to consider it as very liquid. So if you had a lot of CDOs on your balance sheet, yeah, this was considered to be a good sign. Well, when we looked at the crisis, the liquidity in CDOs completely dried up. So nowadays we have a very different uh, perspective on uh, those liquid assets. So this is a good example of why you have to involve expert judgment uh, for your, your model. Uh, also experts have a view on the different uh, factor categories that should be present in the model. You should have a, a good balance between risk profile uh, explanatory variables or leverage uh, size, likelihood of government support, um, liquidity, like I mentioned before, all those factors should be present in the model and also with uh, the correct rate. You don't want to have any category to be overly present in the model, nor too little presence in, uh, in the model. So this, this, these weights are very important for developing a good model and should align risk management or senior risk management's uh, expectations. And mostly we conclude the development process by a UAT or user acceptance test in which you really test the model where uh, the users of the model uh, fill out the characteristics of a bank, the, the input variables, see what the PD for a bank would be and uh, we ask them if this aligns with their expectations. So and this concludes the PD development process. And now uh, uh, a slightly different question. What are, according to you, the most important characteristics to be a good 
risk manager? By definition, I think it's impossible to identify all the black swans that are out there. So you cannot model any possible event that might harm the bank or the financial institution. So in that sense, uh, as a quantitative risk manager, we should be humble about the capability of our models. So that also raises uh, the consideration that uh, when you're modeling, you should always uh, make a comparison between complexity and simplicity. If you want to take into account all the black swans out there, you're going to get an impossible model to work with. Uh, it's going to be way too complex, which makes it very hard to explain, to embed it in the IT systems, etc. Uh, so this uh, trade-off between complexity and um, simplicity is so always something you have to take into account. Further, of course, you have to be uh, very accurate when you are developing quantitative uh, models, uh, you're going to have to be objective, um, you have to be very critical, do the outcomes make sense, uh, is it in line with your expectations, is it in line with senior risk management expectations, um, and of course you have to have very good communicative skills because you will be asked to explain your model, to explain certain outcomes. How come that the regulatory capital is so high or so low? Uh, what does this mean? What happens if this uh, is the input to this uh, model? So this, uh, these are the most important uh, characteristics for being a good risk manager. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It was a great pleasure to be here and I'm sure that my students, our students, are very happy for this interview. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.